Coming up next on this edition of In the City, native son David Price makes a surprise visit to Murfreesboro's Miracle Field to pitch baseball on one of the last Saturdays of the 2017 season. The Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department unveils two fire engines that are 125 years apart. Murfreesboro aggressively tackles traffic problems with the Engineering Department's Congestion Hotspot Program. Plus, Murfreesboro City Schools open a new Family Resource Center in Olive Branch Church. We'll tell you all about these stories and more coming up right now on this edition of In the City. Welcome to another edition of In the City, your source for what's happening right here in the city of Murfreesboro. I'm Mike Browning. Well, as the first baseball season came to a close at the new Miracle Field, Murfreesboro native David Price made a surprise appearance to pitch to the players, sign autographs, and generally make everyone's day a memorable one. The Miracle Field of Murfreesboro, in front of SportsCon, had its grand opening May 6, 2017. The Miracle Field is a custom-designed rubberized baseball field built for special needs children and adults. It accommodates wheelchairs and other assistive devices. There's also an inclusive playground. Major League Baseball Boston Red Sox pitcher, Cy Young winner, All-Star, and Blackman High School graduate David Price spearheaded this project, along with his Project 1-4 Foundation. Being the inaugural season, we wanted to go out on some of the last games of the 2017 season and get a reaction about the new facility. The Miracle League is such an asset to this community. It's just a great opportunity for these kids to get out here, uh, enjoy the day, be part of a team, and uh, you know have that accomplishment at the end of the day that they came around home base as a, as a typical kid. You know, some kids are in wheelchairs, some kids have all different levels of play, and the Miracle League league uh, accommodates everyone of every different level to be able to play. We started out at Barfield a, a few years ago and uh, uh, David Price's mom called us up one year and, and said, hey, would you be interested in a miracle field? And I said, well, heck yeah, and uh, it's beyond my expectations. You know, I thought it would just be a nice field, but we, we've got the, you know, jumbotron and the walk-up music and it's, it's really special. It's really awesome. What made this day even more special is that David came out to spend the day with the players as he wore his Blackman High School baseball jersey. We got to spend some time with the Schweitzer family. They talked about what the Miracle Field has meant to them and their special needs son, Finn. This was unimaginable for us. The chance for him to play in an actual league was like, we never thought that that would ever happen. He tells everyone at school that he's got um, a baseball game the next day, so there's different people that come that specifically come to root for him because they know how big of a deal it is for him. Finn's best friend is Samuel. They met on the Miracle Field and have been inseparable ever since. Not a lot of kids are cool to come up to Finn and start talking to him and treat him like he's not in a wheelchair and they have conversations and Finn doesn't talk. Samuel just took, took the initiative and has just clung on to him and, and Finn, Finn, you like that? You like when Samuel comes? Yeah. Is he your friend? Would you say he's your best friend? Yeah. Holly talks about the importance of her two sons able to go to Buchanan Elementary together. During the week, he does school. He's in a typical class, and he goes to school with his brother, and he's accepted by everybody. Once I go to lunch, he gets to see me, and no other kid does at my school. Like, they don't see brother and sister. They accept him. They do. They accept him there, which is awesome. When Finn is on the field, that's time he gets to bond with his dad, Jason. He talks about the importance of that time together. Finn is a huge sports fanatic. Um, you know, it's actually nice to be a part of an organized environment, um, you know, with what David Price and his Project 1-4 has um, brought to the community here has been nothing but less than amazing. 
uh, you know, for myself as well too, with, you know, being gone a lot throughout the week for work. Um, you know, these boys are her full-time job. Uh, so it's, you know, I, I hold her in high regards with everything that she deals with on a daily basis. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's been great, you know, to see Samuel, the bond that they've had. Um, it brings a smile to my face. I think, you know, even if I wasn't here, he's, he's going to be more than taken care of with everybody that's around here. I asked Preston what he has learned from his brother, Fan. That it's okay to be different. I hope by getting the word out to other people in the community, we can have more kids uh, able to play and be part of this effort. You know, a lot of people will go to high school football games as that don't have any family members on the team. This is a great opportunity for our community to come out and support the special needs community and for these kids to be able to see that there's people out there that care and to give them the experience of a, you know, a, a real baseball game. Oakland's mansion recently became the perfect setting for Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department to unveil a restored 1892 steam engine along with a new 2017 100-foot aerial apparatus. Check it out. Good afternoon. I want to welcome everybody to Oakland's mansion and I want to thank in particular Mary Beth and all the staff with Oakland's mansion for letting us have a and the Visitor Center for letting us have this event, uh, this historic event here. And I want to thank everyone for coming today. Um, the weather's really, really nice today. Uh, it's a little bit chilly, but it's a, it's a fall day and it's a great day for us to, to unveil uh, two pieces of equipment for the Murfreesboro um, Fire Rescue Department. You know, it's fitting that we get to come here today because we're not only celebrating the past, but we're also celebrating uh, the present. And as we're sitting here today at, or at Oakland's mansion and we're getting ready to see a, our steam engine pull up, um, you know, you, you can't help but to think about where we've come from and where we are now. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for what you do every day. And thank you for making us look good. First, I want to talk about our new fire truck uh, apparatus. This will be the first 100 foot aerial uh, in the history of the Murfreesboro Fire Rescue Department. Uh, and it's, it actually will climb 100 feet in the air. The bucket will uh, when raised to full height and, and we're very excited about it. It will pump around 2,000 gallons a minute of water. This is a unique color scheme that you've never seen on a Murfreesboro fire apparatus before. This color scheme is a silver over red. The top of the cab is silver and a lot of the trim on this apparatus is blue. Uh, in representation of our relationship with Middle Tennessee State University, our hometown school, and what that school and that relationship mean to us. It will be responding from uh, Station 4 when it's relocated to Medical Center Parkway. Uh, it was built by the Sutton Corporation, which is a, a corporation uh, fire apparatus manufacturer in Amlin, Ohio, just outside of Columbus. And it's a family-owned corporation, uh, family-owned business uh, that's very long-standing in history and tradition as well. And we really appreciate um, the ability to have such a nice piece of equipment that you're going to see here today. Now I want to talk about our, our refurbished steam engine. And, and there's a lot of people that uh, care about this steam engine a lot. And I, I think it's very important for us to bra embrace our history uh, as a city uh, and as a, a fire service in general. And there are very few uh, steam engines like this steam engine that you're going to see today left in America. This fire truck is a uh, 1892 Aaron's fire steam engine. It was pulled by, at the, in the, at the time by three horses. This truck, even when it was designed in 1892, would pump 1,000 gallons a minute of water. And, and the amazing thing about that is we were all kind of looking at ourselves thinking, where did they get 1,000 gallons of water back in that day? Because they didn't have hydrants that flow 1,500 to 2,000 gallons a minute of water like we do today. And literally, you have to be near a river or creek or water source for these trucks to operate in that in that manner and so it's amazing uh, to know that this truck in, in its day would pump that much and, and would go to that level the steam engine was in cannonsburg but it was in a very deteriorated condition uh, it was the, the the painting on it was very pitted and everything else and the wheels had literally fall, fallen apart we had to crane the steam engine out and get it over to mid-south to be able to even start working on it and so it was amazing thing to see this come together and there's exactly 125 years of age difference between the two apparatus that you'll see here today. As the city grows, so does traffic. The city council approved congestion hotspot program funding to address more than a dozen needed street improvements. These road widenings, turn lanes, and extended roadways help enhance traffic flow. Here's a look at your tax dollars at work. 
as the city of Murfreesboro grows, traffic congestion continues to be a major challenge for commuters and city engineers seeking to enhance traffic flow. The city is known for larger road projects that take years to complete, but the city engineering department has developed a smaller project program aimed at reducing traffic congestion in a short amount of time. We call it the Congestion Hotspot Program. We came up with uh, about 40 locations around town initially that uh, where we're having more operational type issues in, uh, in the intersections. These are more that where we can come in and, and maybe lengthen a turn lane, maybe signalize an intersection and do all that work within a, uh, a month or two and then be able to, uh, to, to move on to the next project. So it's something that we're able to, to see a more immediate effects of the work that we're doing. Griffith explains one of the ways these congestion hotspot projects get done quicker and cheaper. Another neat thing about this project is, is, is almost all of these designs are done in-house. Our engineering department are, is doing the designs. We turn it over to our engineers, they're able to produce a plan and then we're able to go to work real quickly on it. So a lot of these went from, from ideal to actual construction and actual completion in just, uh, just a few short months. Griffith explains one of these typical congestion hotspot projects that is adding a new traffic light and a right turn lane. This is at uh, Medical Center Parkway and Gateway Boulevard. Had a lot of requests from folks, especially using Gateway Boulevard to signalize this. Before we installed the signal, we actually wanted to go ahead and get a right turn lane in here to kind of get the, the cars off the, uh, the through movement. But one of the problems that we had was all the electrical conduit and the boxes and things that you see around here. Uh, we, we couldn't move them and get the turn lane in. So what we did was we, we wound up widening to both sides, the, the center median and the outside to get another 11 feet of pavement in in order to get the right turn lane in. If you have suggestions of problem areas that would fit into the congestion hotspot program, please call the city's engineering department at 615-893-6441. The Murfreesboro City Schools is always looking for ways to help children be successful. A new family resource center has opened in Olive Branch Church to help fill the needs of city school families. A new Murfreesboro City Schools Family Resource Center was opened at Olive Branch Church. Family resource centers are available for city school students and their families. They offer a wide array of assistance. The stated goal of these centers is helping children to be productive, successful students. Let me say how excited we are to have all of you join us this morning for the open house of this partnership between Olive Branch Church and Murfreesboro City Schools for our Family Resource Center. This partnership will allow us to expand the programs and offer engaging activities and services to our parents and families. The Murfreesboro City School Director talks about the importance of partnerships to be able to provide what children need to be successful. Murfreesboro City Schools is committed to the whole child. We're committed to the whole family and we're committed to the whole community. It's nice when you need something that you can call people and they are there immediately. What I want to be sure of is when they call us that we are there immediately. So please use this center. Uh, to help us with whatever the needs of the community are. It's a real blessing to be here in this particular location with this particular church. We understand that a lot of times there seems to be a divide between education and religion. But what we also understand is the church is made up of people and the schools are made up of people. And every person has a talent to bring and that's really what we value. Olive Branch has been a major community partner for several years, but a study provided the reason the church was a perfect place to put the resource center. In a 10 mile radius of Olive Branch Church, there are eight to 10,000 people in or below poverty. That's staggering. That, to me, that's staggering. Our goal, help that family succeed, help that child succeed. They said, Pastor Windrow said, Jolene, how are you going to show goals? And I went, uh, 
the person that walks through the door and I help, that's a goal, that's a goal I've achieved, achieved to me. What are you doing for these families? Pastor Vincent Windrow, I'm going to have a door open. They're coming through that door, and we'll work it from there. The Murfreesboro City Schools Family Resource Center at Olive Branch Church, 115 Minerva Drive, is open for parents and students on Wednesday and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. This resource center will offer courses on financial literacy, GED test classes, parenting support groups, and workshops and healthy cooking classes. Additionally, a computer lab and other resources are available for parents. Adults will be able to work on resumes, apply for jobs, and or pursue other learning opportunities online. In October, the city and county fire departments and volunteer firefighters converged on Murfreesboro for some hands-on training. Now, this training is both vital and is rare for firefighters. Finding the right location for training is a challenge, but Murfreesboro had just the right place. The Firehouse Expo is a fire service convention that took place in Nashville at the Convention Center. In conjunction with that, the Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department hosted hands-on training exercises at the future home of the Doug Young Public Safety Training Facility on Bridge Avenue in the old Franklin Heights public housing property. Combined with students and instructors, we're, we have about 250 that are present today and um, just around that same number tomorrow expected. Because of the convention that took place in Nashville, these training exercises in Murfreesboro were attended by firefighters from all over the country. Yes, it's definitely um, great that we have this type of training here because volunteer fire departments, paid fire departments from all across the United States, they're able to take this opportunity to get these courses and learn some of the basics that they may not have the opportunity to have back at home. So it's really a great opportunity for all these agencies to get together, to train together, and it's it's just a unique opportunity and we're very proud to be a part of that. The training facility is also under construction and should be completed by the time the 2018 Fire Expo takes place. Next year is going to be a lot different. We're definitely going to be having a drill tower here. We're going to move our training offices here and there's going to be several different things that we're also sharing that obviously with the police department because it's the combined public safety training facility. It's, the construction is going to be taken care of in phases so I don't have it an exact completion date, but it's well underway as you can see. Murfreesboro has some of the best schools in Tennessee with a variety of top-notch teachers and programs. Hobgood Elementary played host to an education festival to expose children to subjects that will ultimately meet the needs of a 21st century economy. The first ever Tennessee STEAM Festival happened in October. STEAM stands for science, technology, engineering, art, and math. This festival is an initiative of the Discovery Center to connect student curiosity to careers that will help fill gaps in the existing workforce. Hopgood Elementary was a sponsor and we found out what projects were set up for the students. Today at Hopgood we're focusing on four different uh, projects. We have the build where they will be looking at mathematics through real life construction and they will actually build a, a frame of a house. Um, we also have sphero balls which are little balls that are controlled with programming. So the students will program the, the sphero to do certain actions and then they have to race it. So they have an end goal, they have to program it, tell it what to do, then race it to see who wins. So there's a lot of problem solving involved in that. We also have 3D printing and visually going back and forth from 2D to 3D is difficult to do, but that design process that's occurring during the, the 3D design that is necessary in order for you to 3D print is something that we have to build in students. So just opening up their minds to possibilities, but also the why and the how kind of behind it. And of course the drone. Um, today they will be experiencing up close interactions with the drone and talking about thermal imagery and about infrared, so where the drone can take images based on heat, temperature, and produce an image, which is really cool because the fire department also uses thermal Im imagery. And so that cross-curricular, just all of that, just opens up their mind to what's going on around them and helps them to see more globally instead of just so narrow. Barch talks about programs that are set up for today's student to fill the needs of a future workforce. 
So why STEAM? When you focus on integrating what's really happening in the world and you're creating global learners by taking off that narrow vision of which is what's right in front of you, there's a love of life, a love of learning that comes into play and that teachers, for so long we've been bound to, and we still are bound to standards, but it gives us some freedom to be creative, to um, engage students based on their interests. Instead of learning things in isolation, we're learning them in how they're coherent and how it works together which helps everybody make meaning of the world in which they live. Barch explains the reason that she chose to be an instructor and help shape students in the way they look at the world. When I teach through integration in STEAM, I see these children who may become waiting to feel validated. I see that turning around where they, they start to feel affirmed. They start to believe in who they are. They start to build a confidence because they have to persevere through hard challenges and it builds true confidence instead of um, temporary egos or you know good grades with little effort they have to really put forth effort and so we're building these individuals who learn to believe in themselves and who learn to persevere and so this gives us an opportunity to help them find that in, that way to plug in to how they want to change the world and how they can change the world and to give them those those skills to change the world. For years now, the city has been requiring businesses to install stormwater treatment devices to help improve the quality of stormwater. It's vital to our streams and rivers. In 2008, the state of Tennessee added new stormwater regulations to Murfreesboro. These regulations were to improve stormwater that runs into storm drains and goes untreated directly into the streams and rivers. Stormwater Inspector Paul Haney explains what the regulations are supposed to accomplish. To regulate the quantity leaving your site and the quality of the water leaving your site. So in terms of quantity, what we're trying to do is keep you from flooding the neighbors downstream. As we keep creating impervious area, we're putting rooftops on and we're putting down asphalt and concrete. We're taking soil that would have normally absorbed rain and now it becomes runoff. As far as quality, as we have streets and pavements, there's oils and things like that in there and trash and debris and anything that we can remove before it leaves the site just allows the neighbor to have cleaner water and as it meets our streams, our streams are better. And then even the intake for public water sources, uh, they would have less to treat if we keep a water clean when it's leaving our sites. We visited some sites around Murfreesboro to show some BMPs or best maintenance practices of how stormwater is being handled. Today we'll go around and uh, look at different facilities, but basically what we'll see is how did they take care of treatment and what uh, different devices did they use to achieve their goals. On this particular one, they actually have underground storage where the water runs into the storm drains and then goes into an underground storage facility and it can do one of two things. It can either infiltrate into the ground or it would actually hold a certain amount and release it at a slower rate so that the neighbor next door doesn't get all that water at one time. So on a site like this, what I would be uh, inspecting is to see how much trash is on the parking lot and how much is actually getting into the storage system. As you can look, there's no water or any trash in there, so this is looking pretty good. So if an owner is taking care of his parking lot and keeping the trash from going down there, obviously it costs a lot less to pick it up off the parking lot than if he allowed it to be in the system. Here we're seeing two types of concrete. They're allowing the water to run off the one concrete onto this other, which will allow water to uh, infiltrate through it. So the water will actually run through this concrete and then it will stay there and either inf infiltrate into the ground or drain out through an under drain. When yeah. we come out here to inspect a site like this, really what we're looking for is just to make sure the concrete's staying clean. We're not seeing sediment uh, build up on the concrete and that it's still able to allow water to infiltrate. This particular site, they chose to use a bioretention. It takes care of uh, quantity, as you can see, it's kind of in a bowl, but it also takes care of the quality of the water. Nitrogens is one of the number one pollutants in water. The plants will work on the nitrogen and it also allows the water to set in here and evaporate. 
on a vial retention, you really don't want to get much compaction. You want the soil to be loose so that the water is allowed to penetrate back through it. Terminal pavers are great for aesthetics, but they also allow water to infiltrate. They'll have a rock base that is deep and it will usually have an underdrain in it that allows the water to infiltrate in between the blocks. And as far as maintenance goes, there's not much maintenance required to them other than just keeping the top of it cleaned off. This particular side has a water quality unit. Basically, it works as a vortex, so the water will flow in here, and as it spins the water, it'll cause the solids to drop out. And what we do to inspect them is we have to pull the lid off, which usually weighs about 300 pounds. So what I'd be looking for here is to see if there's any trash or debris on top of the water. We'll also measure it to see how much sediment's in it, but to see a little bit of trash in there makes us realize that the system's working. That trash would have otherwise washed off into a stream or off the property somewhere. Looking at an area like this, you wouldn't even expect it to be a water quality site, but this ditch right here is actually an infiltration ditch. So what happens is the water runs out here, infiltrates into the ground, goes through some gravel and into a pipe and then on out. So it's kind of filtering the water, uh, the grass is getting a chance to take some of the nitrogen out, and it's kind of a hidden stormwater control measure. In other news, the city of Murfreesboro wants you to be aware of a special census packet coming to you in the mail with very important information. Please take a minute and watch this short public service announcement. Be Murfreesboro, be counted. The city of Murfreesboro will be conducting a special census in the coming months, so we need your help. This is a state census and simply requires your address and the first and last names of those living at that address. That's it. The state shares revenue with cities on a per capita basis. Do your part to be counted and we will all benefit from our fair share of the state taxes you already pay. Whether you are native or new to the borough, we need you to be counted. Everyone will receive a census packet in the mail which will include a special six digit code specifically for you. Once you get the code, you can fill out the census online by visiting www.murfreesborotn.gov census or you can mail in the form that will be included in your census packet. Again, we need your help in filling out the special census. For more information, email census at murfreesborotn.gov. Participate in the special census. Be Murfreesboro, be counted. Again, please do your part and participate in this special census to make sure your tax dollars stay in Murfreesboro. Visit murfreesborotn.gov slash census and be counted. City property taxes are due January 2, 2018. Taxes paid or postmarked after January 2, 2018 will be subject to interest charges. You can look up your property tax information and pay online at www.murfreesborotn.gov slash property tax lookup. The City of Murfreesboro City Hall will be closed Veterans Day, November 10, 2017. And for the Thanksgiving holiday, November 23rd and 24th, 2017. To find out if a Murfreesboro Recreation Facility is closed or open, call for operating hours. Well, that's it for this edition of In the City. As always, for more information about the city of Murfreesboro, you can always visit our website at murfreesborotn.gov. And if you want to see one of the stories that you've seen today or catch up on some of the latest city news, you can always visit the City of Murfreesboro YouTube channel. I'm Mike Browning. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you in the city.